about how to use Sublime Text 3 efficiently. My name is Jansen, so let's begin. So a quick overview of what I'll be talking about is first I'll start talking about package control, and then I'll talk talking about pl uh, plugins, themes, shortcuts, and then Sublime settings. So first off, I want to start talking about Sublime Text 3. If you guys are not already using Sublime Text 3, I highly recommend you guys start using Sublime Text 3. Um, it includes all the newest features like speed improvements and plugin improvements, and there's a lot like new features such as like uh, sidebar icons, and it's still free. That's the most important part. So package control. Package control is how Sublime handles plugins. So first, before you get any plugins, you have to get package control. And this is a site where you could get it, and then after you install it, you could just use command shift P to access it. So the first plugin that I highly recommend is Sublime uh, Code Int. Um, it's my favorite one because it allows you to autocomplete functions. And when you, let's say for this one, if you autocomplete the function, it'll give you like a template, and you can press tab and then fill it out. Another plugin I recommend is a linter. So if you get Sublime Linter, and then you install like a certain type of linter, I recommend um, ESLint, which is like the newest one. And it's really easy to do. After you install this, you just install another plugin, and you have the global install uh, ESLint uh, node with NPM. Another plugin I recommend is this Prettyfy plugin. Basically, it makes your code pretty. So it indents all your code perfectly, and it will allow you to see it better. Oh, another one, not this one, uh, Origami. Origami is the thing that allows you to create panels and delete panels really fast. So this one I'm going to show you. I'm deleting panel right now. But you can also make it at the same time. And also it allows you to travel. So it's really efficient if you just don't want to use your mouse at all and just want to use your keyboard. The next one, this, this one I highly recommend if you're doing a lot of front end, like uh, typing uh, HTML and CSS. Personally, I don't use it, so I can't really explain that well. But it allows you to write this shorthand that automatically compiles when you use the shortcut. And it's really good if you always focus on the front end. Next up, we're going to be talking about themes. This is one I use personally. I love it because it makes all the UI bigger, so it allows you to see it better. Also adds uh, sidebar icons and makes your tabs bigger and so on. But let's say you don't like the colors. So you could get something called um, uh, Color Sublime. And this allows you to install uh, color ske uh, schemes really easily. And this is one I used that I replaced from the previous one, which is feels good. And it gives you a really nice texture because I like a dark background and a lighter text. So next up, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, shortcuts. So this one is how you hide your sidebar. Now you might be wondering why you want to hide your sidebar. First off, it gives you more space. And secondly, um, you could start using a Command P. A Command P is a good way to start using because when you start working on larger pro uh, projects, you're going to be having so much files that you don't know how to navigate, and then your sidebar becomes useless, right? So you want to start using Command P to navigate your, through your files. And one way to use Command P is you just type like, let's say you want to go to a models folder, you would type model, and then you type the file name like user. And it will like uh, do a, fi a fuzzy search, go through all your files, and it will list all of them. And when you're using Command P, it will also like, show you a preview of that file. So more shortcuts. So this one you probably already know, which is Command D, which is basically it will, copy, it will select that word, and you press it again, you can select uh, more reoccurrence of that word. But another one that not a lot of people know is duplicate line. So let's say you're on a certain line, and you, and you hold Shift, and then you do Command D, it will copy that line onto the next line. And if you keep doing it, you could keep making copies. And that's really useful. So this next one is insert line. Um, you might think, this is weird. Why would I need to remember this shortcut? This shortcut is very useful. For example, if you have a, co a comment, so like, and then you press Enter, right? It will automatically comment the next line out. But if you do Command Enter, it will not comment the next line. And that will save you time. So more about like moving through like your code. So this one is really cool, uh, where you could just move your line of code up and down, so you don't have to like copy and paste it. So let's say I want to move up here, or I could just move it down. And that one's really useful for movement. Um, next one, cutting a line. So normally people, when they cut, they will like, they will select the whole line with their mouse and then cut it. But actually, you just press. Uh, Command X, and we'll just copy it to your clipboard. Oh, this is my favorite one. So when you're on a certain line on your cursor, right, you press Command L, you select it, and you press it again, you keep selecting it. Now you might think, oh, I could just do my mouse with it, but this way is actually a lot faster if you just like move your hand to your mouse. 
compared to moving it to your mouse. So this one is something that I don't really use, but I normally use the, the first one, which is deleting to the end of the line. So example here is, if I was here and I say, hmm, I don't, I don't think it's a string. I'm going to delete it. So I'm going to press this two times, and it deletes it. And I could just write in a new one. And then there's a reverse command, which is you delete to the beginning of the line, which is the same thing. And just deletes all the way to the beginning, if you're at the end. Well, because I was at the end. But if you're in the middle, it would delete to the beginning. Next one is jumping to closing parentheses. This one I don't really use, the first one, for jumping to parentheses. So if I was in here and I do Control M, I'll jump to the last one. But if I want to go to the first one, I'll just press this and I go to the beginning. This one's not that useful. So the alternative is if you hold Shift. When you hold Shift, you will select everything inside the parentheses. So why would that be good is if you write a function that you don't like, you can select everything in the function and then just delete it. Next one is uh, select quoted. This one's actually a plugin. So before I was talking about how you can select all the content inside a parentheses, but uh, inside a function or a bracket. But this one is only for selecting the quotes. So inside, you do command, and then you select the quote. And it'll only select the content inside the quote. And that's really efficient. Um, next up, it's about moving ar around when you're in a line. So first, uh, let's say you're in, uh, in, in the middle, right? If you want to move to the beginning, you do command and then arrow to the left. You go back to the left. And you want to go to the end, you do command right. And you go back to the end. Now you might be wondering, how can I travel to the middle of the line? Well, Sublime doesn't really have that. So my recommendation is this plugin called HJump. HJump basically allows you to travel anywhere. Uh, let's say you want to travel to a certain letter. You could do the, do the shortcut and then jump to it. So I'm going to do a quick example. I'm not really good with it. So some, most of the time, I will use a mouse. But sometimes, if I want to jump, let's say I want to jump to one of the SQLized S. I'll do the shortcut, type S, and then you type the letter following afterwards. And I jump to S. So a good way to practice all these shortcuts that I just talked about is Sublime Tutor. It's a plugin that you could download. And it will have a lot of tutorials going through each chapter. You learn basically all the shortcuts that I just talked about today and even more. Next up, I want to talk about settings. So one of my favorite settings that you can edit by going to preference and then settings and then user is save on focus loss. So basically, uh, a lot of people ask you, hey, did you save the file yet if something is wrong? But if you put this in your settings file, every time you alt-tab to a different window, it will automatically save all your files. I think this is like the coolest setting features you can do. And another setting I uh, would recommend everybody changing is the key bindings. So basically, uh, Sublime has something called paste and indent. So when you copy code online and you paste into Sublime, it's not correctly indented. But what I did was I changed my paste key in Sublime to just do paste and indent. And then when I copy code online, it will always be indented correctly. So let's say you master Sublime. Uh, there's a plugin and extension that you could use for Chrome that allows you to use Sublime to type up anything, and it will transfer over to the text box. And this is only when like you really love Sublime, and you can't live without the shortcuts anymore in any text box. So uh, I include all the resources that I talked about, so you can like, get all the plugins, get all the themes. And I encourage everybody to look at it after I upload all the slides. So I want to thank all you guys for listening to my tech talk. And I'm going to open up for questions.